are making zucchini relish coming up on the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden. Welcome to Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Holly Bear. This show is dedicated to the average gardener, simple home living, and using what you already have. Well, today we're making zucchini relish. It's a simple, delicious condiment that you can use, and you don't have to have canning equipment to make it. You can put it in your fridge or your freezer. So we've completed the first step, which you chop all the zucchini, peppers, and onions. You cover it with enough water, and then you put the salt in it, mix it all together, and you let it stand for about three hours. Our next step is to drain it. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. So after we let this stand for three hours, we're gonna take it and strain it. You wanna give a little rinse. So rinse the bowl out and then You know fairly well because there is quite a bit of salt in there that's just gonna hurt you but obviously less salt we have in our diets the better and it's pretty well rinsed now I'm gonna put it back in the bowl and then we're gonna start the brine for the process of making the relish now we're ready to make the brine for the zucchini relish and all you need to do is you add vinegar and water. We're using apple cider vinegar. You can use white or apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar makes it a little bit sweeter. So, so we have the apple cider vinegar and the water to the pot here and then you want to add the sugar. And you want to stir that until it dissolves. Along with that you want to add about a tablespoon or so of mustard seeds. You can use half mustard, half celery seeds. Um, you know, you can use all mustard seeds, whatever you have is fine. I wouldn't really use all celery seeds. Make sure you have some mustard seeds in there. So you stir this around and you want to bring it to a boil. So as you can see it's boiling and the sugar has dissolved nicely. All you want to do is turn this down to a simmer. So I'm going to turn on low. And you just want it to simmer for about three minutes. So now we're going to add The zucchini, onion, and pepper combination. Now you can use any kind of sweet peppers, red, yellow, green, orange, um, it doesn't matter. So we've got that added here. And what you want to do is bring it back up to a boil. So now we've added it to the pot, we're going to bring it back up to a boil. You're going to let it boil just for about a minute. Then you're going to reduce it to a simmer, let it simmer about 10 to 20 minutes, more towards the 20 minutes if you're not going to can it. If you are going to can it, then more towards the 10 minutes. Once you've done that, if you want to can it, you're going to put it into half pint canning jars, leave in one quarter inch headspace, and you're going to can it in a boiling water bath canner for 10 minutes. Um, if you're not going to can it, then we recommend you bring it down to room temperature, and you can put it either in freezer bags, or refrigerator bag it keeps for several months in the refrigerator and for up to a year in the freezer. You can put it in a jar or any type of airtight container and leave it in your fridge up to several months. But it's so delicious, it's not gonna last that long anyway. Okay. 
One of the advantages of growing hot peppers in your garden, you can make your own chili powder. It's very simple to do. We, we grow cayenne and jalapeno peppers in the garden. These cayennes are actually like third generation. We were given, uh, a friend gave them to us several years ago and we've saved the seeds over and over again. Simply we, what you want to do is, we've dried these for about two months now to make sure they're extremely dry. You'll want to cut the tops of them off. Shears work quite well for that. We'll take the seeds here and we'll save some of the seeds as well. And then we're going to grind them up in a coffee grinder. Now you can save some of these chilies if, you're, if you like really hot spicy food and you cook with them a lot. Or you can grind them up and you can put them in on top of chili or other foods that you like a little heat in. So now that we've got them all cut, we get a nice little pile. Now coffee grinder works best for this. If you don't have a coffee grinder, a blender, or a food processor works well. If you have another tool similar to a coffee grinder, it also works well. If you use a coffee grinder, you want to clean it before and obviously after you grind the chilies or somebody in the family is going to be pretty upset with you. So you just want to load your chilies in the coffee grinder and as you can see they're pretty dry. So we're going to do one batch there because you want these to cut real, be real fine. So we're just going to... So you just put the seeds and everything in it and as you can see you've got a chili powder chili flake thing going on there. Now obviously the seeds is where a lot of the heat holds on or where a lot of the heat is. Now when doing this you want to be very careful you don't breathe this powder in because it will uh, choke you up. So we're just going to pour them, pour that in the uh, bowl there. Now if you really want it fine powder you can take it through a sieve or a, a strainer but I don't mind having some of the flakes in it uh, when I'm cooking with it. Okay, now we got our next uh, second batch in here. We're just going to grind it up the same way. Okay, that's our second batch there. And I, you know, there's going to be some particles that are just not going to break up. And we'll get that all out of there. <coughs> and as you can see, it's very, got a little powder can choke you up. Now here's a, some that we made last year. Uh, you can reuse an old spice jar and whether you use a lot of chili powder or a little chili powder it can save you money in the long run and now you know what to do with those hot peppers in the garden come this summer. This won't start. Have you ever had this problem? Your charcoal is too damp to light because you left it in the bag in the garage, the barn. Well, here's a simple solution to that problem. Whether you have a Tupperware tub or a small container like this, put your charcoal in it to keep the moisture out of it so when it's barbecue time, you can light your grill a whole lot easier. and requested too many seed catalogs and now your family thinks you're crazy. Well you're not crazy, you're just trying to get the best possible produce to grow in your garden for your family. But really what do you do when you have 11, 12, 20 seed catalogs coming out of your mailbox? Well come inside and I'll give you some important information that will help you pick the best seed company to buy from. So now you've got all your seed catalogs, how do you determine which one you're going to order from? Well, there are a few factors you need to consider when, when looking at your seed catalogs. Before I open any seed catalog, I look at where the company is located at. You can find that information on the back of the seed catalog with the return address next to your name. Why is this information important? Well, because if I'm in Wisconsin and the seed company is from Florida, that Florida company is not going to focus on the seeds that I'm going to be able to successfully grow in my garden in Wisconsin. So that seed catalog would be out of the picture. Now, if the seed catalog is from Missouri or Illinois or Indiana, then they're going to focus more on the seeds that I'll be able to grow in my region. Next is, all good seed catalogs will have a bio about the company. Simply open it up and you'll see it inside the cover and it tells the history of the company, what the company stands for, believes in, the way the seeds are uh, grown and harvested, 
and how they're looking to help the customer in the upcoming year. Now after I've read that and if I'm happy with what the company is wanting to provide me or believes in or how the seeds are grown, then I look at what type of seeds am I wanting to grow. Hybrid, heirloom, or organic. Some companies, some seed catalogs will only focus on one of those. Others will focus on all three and it's a variety throughout the catalog. Once I've got that figured out, now it's and the important aspect of money. I go to the center of the catalog and I look at the shipping cost before I even decide what type of seeds or how many uh, I'm wanting to purchase. Some catalogs have a great deal where it's a flat rate. No matter how much money you, you spend, it's only going to cost you a certain amount to ship. Some catalogs have a deal where if you spend so much, the shipping is free. And others will strictly charge you for the amount that you purchase. After I figure out one of the catalog, after I figure out the catalog of my choice based on the shipping cost, based on the bio, the type of seeds, and where they're located, now I'll start thumbing through it and highlighting and deciding what seeds I want to purchase to plant in my garden this year. So if you follow those tips, your garden will probably be a much more successful place than it has been in years past. Whether you spend 50 bucks a year on your garden or 500, how do you budget for it? Well, there's a few different ways of doing that. One is, yeah, put a few dollars aside every month, whether it's $5 or $20, and put in an envelope or a piggy bank on the cabinet. Another way is recycling. It makes the world a greener place to live, puts a little free money in your pocket, and it's kind of fun to do anyway. Let's take a look at some of the items that you can recycle. Now, I'll tell you, before you even start wanting to recycle anything, you should call your local recycling facility and find out what items they take for cash and how much they pay per pound. Almost all recycling facilities will take aluminum cans. By the pound, it doesn't take much to acquire them. We all drink soda or energy drinks, or you know somebody that does. That's one item you can cash in on when it comes to recycling. Some other items you may not be familiar about is motors. Whether it comes out of your vacuum, a microwave, or a sump pump, or an industrial motor, they'll pay so much per pound for those. A simple thing for everybody is an extension cord or cords that come off your appliance. Most places will pay a certain amount per pound for that, even with the installation on, which is an awesome thing. And you can just take in regular scrap metal, whether it's an old metal shelf, an old barbecue grill, even Something a lot of people throw out all the time, aluminum chairs. They'll pay you so much per pound for these. You just want to take all the scrap, uh, the canvas off of it and be as pure as possible. And the cleaner it is, the happier they make them and probably the little bit more money they may pay you. Now, if you've got kids that like to take things apart, I've got a tip for you. If you're going to work or to the store and you on jump in and see somebody throw out an old vacuum, well, there is a small motor in there that's worth a few cents a pound. There is the extension cord that's worth so much a pound, but they can take it apart. One, you give them something to do for about 20 minutes. Two, you teach them about recycling. And three, you teach them the value of a dollar, how much that motor is worth per pound. Another item that I see a lot of people throw out that they are not aware of as recyclable is brake rotors. Now, a few cents a pound, but you gather enough of these up, you get a lot of weight pretty quick. So that's just some of the ideals that you can think about when trying to figure out how to acquire a little extra funding for your garden budget. Well, that's all the time we have. I hope you enjoyed the show as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. And making that homemade zucchini relish, that's something I encourage you to try. It'll save you money from buying at the store, and it'll give you another reason to plant a few more zucchini plants in the garden come this spring. And storing your charcoal in an airtight container, that'll make barbecue time a whole lot more enjoyable for everybody in the family. For all of us here at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener, I'm Joy Baird reminding you, take a child gardening and start growing some memories. Another seed catalog. Holly's going to kill me. The show doesn't have to end here. You can continue the discussion on our Facebook page, keyword Wisconsin Vegetable Gardeners, and like the page. You can also email your questions, comments, or suggestions at thewivegardener at gmail.com, and we may use your question on an upcoming show.